It's not every day we have anniversaries. Not be every day we celebrate the birthday of a particular thing. And so normally anniversary should be a time of rejoicing, of dancing, of music. And the time of anniversary is a time when we are supposed to dance, happy, sing, eat, enjoy ourselves. And the preacher, if he wants to be invited back, ought to preach a very pleasant sermon. And the preacher, when we say, go preach sermon that day, if he wants me to bring and come back, me come preach. He is supposed to preach message when we say, go sweet people for body. Unfortunately for me, my children have chosen a topic that is difficult to treat pleasantly. Well, my children, when we say, come make the things, they difficult somehow for me, because they can't give me topic when we say, I know go feed talk and when we say go sweet people for body. Preparing for the harvest. The topic now to prepare people for the harvest. They told me the, the topic only yesterday, I think. And yesterday you just tell me the topic. Oh. Hmm? Two days ago. Man. Okay, now two days ago. I had already prepared my sermon. I'd already prepared with your own preach. Then they now gave me the theme. They can't give me wait till they can't tie to this anniversary when they do. So I had to change. So I can't change my Simon. And because they are the one who gave me the thing, <laughs> I just have to obey. And because they can't give me this topic, oh, I don't get sure, so I need to obey them. Fortunately, you had prayed that God will speak to you. I believe so all of them, I don't pray, may God can speak to them. And you know, the African elders have a saying, they said, when two children of the same mother enter into the room. Our elderly ones when they Africa, they, they talk on was if picking of the same mother enter one room. And they come out smiling. And they can't come outside they laugh. It means they have not been speaking truth one to the other. It means they did not tell themselves the truth. So if we don't go out of here smiling, that's no problem. At least it will mean that I've spoken the truth to you. If we not go outside come they smile, no problem did that will mean say na I don't tell you the truth. Are you ready to hear the truth? Are you ready to hear the truth? Well, it's even too late now. <laughs> well, it's already too late too. You're already in. You're not already enter. Preparing for the harvest. Preparing for the harvest. Before you begin to talk about preparing for the harvest. Before we can start to talk on how to prepare for harvest. You have to be sure that there will be a harvest. We need to make sure, see, harvest they come. And according to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, for Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, without any doubt, there will be a harvest. Well, we don't need to worry ourselves, who harvest for sure it will come. Because Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 says, for Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, it does say, seed time and harvest time shall never cease. Because it said, the time when we say we will, we will come plant and the time we will come harvest, so it said, not will stop life, life for this set. And when we talk about preparing for harvest, what would they talk about is for one to come ready himself for the harvest when they come. So we need to know a little bit more about this harvest business. We need to know the business of harvest. And then we will know why we need to prepare. And we need to also know the reason why we need to come prepare. And uh, so on and so forth. There is a law which is probably one of the most powerful laws in the world. One law day for this world when we say powerful well, well. Because it's true in the physical, it is true in the spiritual, it is this law they true for what you will they see. It is true for what you will not they see. It's true whether you are Christian, it's true whether you are a pagan. It they true whether you be Christian, it they true whether you not be Christian. It's true everywhere. It they true for everywhere. And it's called the law of harvest. And this law, now the law of harvest. I want to read it to you. Galatians chapter 6. I want to read that to now. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7 to 9. Verse 7. Go reach 9. Galatians 6. Verse 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7. Go reach 9. That's the law of harvest. He says. Now the law of harvest be that it also. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. It's may not deceive yourself, oh, you know if they love God, do. For whatsoever a man sower, that shall he also reap. You see, now what you plant, now you go harvest. That's the law of harvest. And the law of harvest be that. But he went on to say further. He can't continue the toss, say. For he that sower to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He said, anything when he say you can't feed this your flesh, you, the harvest when you get to, now corruption. 
But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. The good thing when you take feed your spirit, say you can reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap. The same will not be tired for the good good things so they do. When the time reach, we'll get the reward. If we faint not. If we not going to tired. That's the law of harvest. And the law of harvest be that. It simply says, whatsoever you sow, that is what you shall reap. He means say, what do you plant that you go harvest? But it, will, it goes a little further than that. You can't continue. Because this same law of harvest says that. Because this law of harvest to say. The harvest is always greater than the seed sown. He say, what you can harvest, it plenty pass what you plant. In the book of Hosea chapter 8 verse 7. Hosea chapter 8 verse 7. Hosea 8 verse 7 says. Hosea chapter 8 verse 7. To say, those who sow the wind shall reap the wild wind. He said those people when sow breeze, na strong breeze, they will come harvest. In other words, the harvest will be much bigger than the seed sow. He means say, the, which you will come harvest, you will plant it past which you plant. And the Bible tells us further in Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. The Bible can tell us also for Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. Second Corinthians nine verse six. For Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. That the harvest is directly proportional to the amount of seeds sown. But you will come harvest, so it depends on how many seeds you plant. He said, when you sow sparingly, you reap. Sparingly. Even a small seed you plant, a small harvest you go get. You sow bountifully, you reap how bountifully. If you can plant plenty, now plenty harvest you go get. Which is one of the reasons why many poor people remain poor. This time be the one of the reasons when we say many people when they poor, they still they poor. Because they have so little, and so they don't want to sow up the little. Because they get small, and they don't want to plant the small. And you know, like the Lord promises followers, you give me one thing, I will give you a hundred in return. Now, Jesus Christ promised the followers, say, if you now give me one thing, now hundred of those things, time you can't give you back. So the man who gives one, gets one times hundred. Me say, person when me say, can't give one thing, now one hundred thing that you can't get back. Whereas the one who gives ten, gets ten times why the one when you can't give 10 me say what you can't get in return now 10 times 100 and of course the one who gives zero get zero times 100 which is what the person when be said you not give anything what you can't get will be nothing times 100 and what you will go and be the result uh -huh, you don't have to get a PhD in math to know that no need to come get big, big certificate for mathematics for you to come know this one but even something more crucial about this law of harvest is that one thing they very very important about this harvest it means say the harvest is always the same kind as the seed the same seed when you plant now you the harvest according to james chapter 3 verse 12. for james chapter 3 verse 12. when you plant fig you cannot harvest uh, grapes or vine you not get the way when we say you can't plant fig fruits and you can't go harvest grape or you can't go harvest vine. If you plant tomato, you cannot reap banana. I think that one is uh, closer home. You not get the way you can't plant tomatoes and when you time to reach for harvest now, you can't go harvest banana. I believe say, this one will understand that because it's there among us here. Whatever you sow, that's exactly what you shall reap. What you plant, that thing you can harvest. I've always told this story, which I believe. I should repeat, at least to get you to laugh a little before we get to areas where we might not be able to laugh too much. And they always they tell this story, and I believe, say, we just need to laugh more before we can reach our place where we say, we don't even see Matt still laugh again. I was traveling out of Nigeria for the first time. And they travel come up from Nigeria for the first time. Several years ago. Many years went up past. And I was going to Kenya. And at Kenya they go. To attend a conference. Because of one conference that make me the travel. And we'll be gone for one week. Now one week I will spend for that place. And my beloved wife said, well, <laughs> you've never traveled out before. We don't know what they eat in Kenya. And my wife went like me where we say, you know what travel before? 
I will not know what they eat for Kenya. So before you go, let me feed you very well. You say, okay, before you come and travel, ma, I'll give you food where well, may you eat. So that if you eat nothing, uh, at least for the next one week, you will remember that you had something good at all. So that when you reach Kenya, you're not going to see any better food like this one eat. You remember, say, you don't eat better food before you leave us. So she prepared Pandedia. She can't prepare Pandedia. If you don't know what that one means, that's none of your business. It doesn't matter. If you don't know what Pandedia means, I will not worry yourself. Don't be your concern with that. Anyway, she prepared Pandedia and uh, bought one big chicken. Prepared it. She prepared Pandedia. She can organize one very big chicken. Set the table for me to eat and then go to the airport. She can arrange the table, make her eat before I can go to the airport. Just as the table was set, some of my friends came from Ibadan. As they don't arrange the table, ma, I can eat to some of my friends from Ibadan. Come, come visit us. And they were hungry. And these people, they were hungry. Where, where? I mean, they went straight to the table and they finished my chicken and my pandedia. So as they enter the house, they go straight to the dining table, go eat my chicken and my pandedia and finish. And it was too late to prepare any new things, so I just... Say, all right, oh. And it wasn't too late to, for my wife to come prepare another one. I can't say, okay. Oh. And I went to the airport. I can't go like that to the airport. And travel to Kenya. I can't travel to Kenya. I've never been to Kenya before, but every day of the conference, somebody came and invited me to lunch. And everywhere we went, they served me chicken. I know I go to Kenya before, but every day one person go come, will come take me go as far go eat for their place. Any house when they carry me go, give me food. Now chicken that they give me, make I eat. So I sold chicken in Nigeria. I harvested it in Kenya. It means I plant chicken for Nigeria. I can't go harvest them for Kenya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now you know a little about the harvest. I believe saying now you don't understand what the harvest can mean. The question now is why do we need to prepare for the harvest? The question be say why we need to come prepare for this harvest. And let's talk about when we talk about harvest now, let's let's keep our mind on the harvest of souls. When they talk about harvest, more put our mind on say to come win person, come Christ. For the time being, we will come to other harvest in a moment. For the meantime. Later, we'll come talk on another harvest. Why do we need to prepare for the harvest of souls that is coming, particularly in Europe? Why we need to come prepare for the harvest of people who will come, we come Christ for Europe here? Because whether you believe it or not, a great revival is beginning in Europe this month. Whether or not I believe I'm or not, to great revival go up for this or you both side. And it's going to bring in millions of souls. And it will carry many people who can't give Jesus Christ. You may not believe it. It doesn't matter. If you not believe I'm more, I don't worry. I know the one who is speaking through me. I know the person when they talk through my mouth. And I'm sure they have a rough idea that's coming. That's why they chose this team. I believe so. they know where they come. Maybe they can't choose this team. Why must we prepare? For the harvest. Why we need to prepare for harvest? According to Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. For Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. Luke 12, verse 16 to 21. For Luke chapter 12, verse 16, go reach 21. The Bible talked about a man whose farm brought in a mighty harvest. The Bible can't talk about one man when we say farm bring plenty harvest. And the man said, What shall I do? I've got a lot of Harvest coming in now. What will I do? The man can say, what do I go do? I get plenty harvest when they come now. What do I go do? He said, well, say, okay, oh. break down my barns and build bigger ones. I'll come break down the place where they put this thing soon I harvest. I'll come build big ones. And then store everything in. And then I will say to my souls. I'll come save everything when I harvest. And I'll come talk to my soul. So, take your rest. We've got a lot of goods laid up for many, many more years. Just enjoy. My soul, I remember you rest so you don't get many, many food. When we feed, can't carry you for many years. You just enjoy yourself. The Bible said, God spoke that day, that very day, and said, Thou fool. The Bible can't tell us, say, God can't talk that day, say, You be fool, oh. This day will that soul be required of you. Now, today, that your soul, I will ask you of him. 
And the man died that night. Now that very night, the man died. When harvest comes in, suddenly and in very large quantities, those who are not prepared will die. When you come harvest many, many things, more than what you they expect to, those people when we say they're not prepared, they will die. Revival always comes like a storm. Re this thing when they call revival, they come like heavy breeze when they blow, like say rain won't fall. Remember when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost? Remember when the Holy Spirit come, come for that day of Pentecost? It came like a mighty rushing wind. You see, I say, come like breeze when we say that they pursue. Anything that had not been well rooted that day would have been uprooted. I say, anything day when we say, you know, they strong inside Jesus Christ, that thing, the breeze for carrying and come out. Well, it wasn't long before Ananias and Sapphira were uprooted. You know, too, too, before Ananias and Sapphira, your wife, they can't die. A revival is about to break out. Revival won't happen now. It's going to be mighty. Now the revival will go big way away. Unfortunately, those who are not prepared will die. Well, those people when we say they're not prepared themselves, now die, they go die. Not necessarily physically, but spiritually. Those people you know me say you go see them die physically, but in the spirit they don't die. I'll give you an example. I go give you an away example. It's a young man. That I used to know. One young man there when we say I know well well. A Christian of the highest order. This person a better Christian I be. I mean born again, sanctified, spirit filled. This person they born again. This person who oh, the blood of Jesus don't wash his sin come out. And the Holy Spirit food the body where well, well. Everything you can think about, talk talking, Bible believing, everything. Anything where you feel talk think about tonight this person be the person they speak in tongue. The person believe all with the Bible talk. I knew him when he was just stepping out. I know this brother as he just graduates. I prayed with him in those days. That time I can't pray with him. I cancelled with him in those days. I advised him. And then he started a church. This brother, he can't start one church show. And the church grew. I mean, mightily. People, when they come to church, come they plenty. And all of a sudden, brother so and so became bishop so and so. At once, so this person be brother so and so, not bishop so and so, that now he can't be. There's nothing wrong in being a bishop. Nothing they bad though, if you be bishop. <laughs> I have a couple of bishops there too. Because I get me some bishop when sit near me for this place. <laughs> Those who are laughing know what I'm talking about. Those people when they laugh, they know what you are they talk about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then the bishop, because there are so many people now in the church, being a very big man, cannot travel alone. Because people don't have plenty for this church. The bishop only you know go for your travel. So when he goes to the right, there are ladies. If you walk go right, some ladies did the right. Most of the left. Ladies. If you go to the left side, many girls did that side also. A lady to carry his drinking cup. One girl they went go carry the cup when he drink water. Another lady to carry his Bible. Another girl they went be seen I go come carry the Bible. Another lady to carry his briefcase. Another girl they went be seen I go come carry a portfolio. Another lady to carry an handkerchief just in case he sneezes. Another girl they went be say old handkerchief in case he can't sneeze. And the bishop died. The bishop can't die you. Spiritually, I mean. I mean, say, not die physically, he can't die spiritually. He's still alive today, but as far as God is concerned, he's no longer his own bishop. The bishop still there alive, oh, but as God they concerned, oh, this bishop not be God bishop again. Are you getting my point? You understand what you they talk? When revival comes suddenly, when you prosper. When you can't get revival, this can't happen well for you at once. Beyond your expectation. More than what you they expect. If you are not careful, prosperity can kill. If you're not they careful, that prosperity when you get fit kill you. And then if you look at Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. If you can't look Luke chapter 5, verse 1, go reach 8. Luke 5, verse 1 to 8. Luke chapter 5, verse 1, go reach 8. It's the story that we've just prayed about, the story of Peter. This story they talk about Peter. He fished all night, he caught nothing, the Lord stepped into his boat. Peter can't go fish all through the night, you know, if he catch one single fish. Jesus Christ can't enter inside a boat. There was a little conversation, and all of a sudden, the man who caught nothing, 
had so much fish that his boat was full. He and Jesus Christ can't talk. Oh. At all, this man went missing off, he cash anything all through the night. He can't cash plenty of fish when he say can't fool the boat. He back on to his friend, they filled their own boat. The two boats were sinking. He can't call a friend when they near and made they can't help and carry fish and they can't carry fish put for that friend boat. The two boats can they sink. That's a kind of blessing that we call embarrassing blessing. Then a type of blessing will make person open a mouth not if close them. That's so much their boats were sinking. The fish in the cash plenty well well until their boats can they sink. But then if you get to verse 8, you will hear what Peter said. He encouraged verse 8. You can't hear what Peter talk. He fell at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Depart from me. He can't kneel down in front of Jesus Christ. He can't say, I beg, why can't leave me? Oh. Go, go away. I don't. I beg, why can't go? Why can't they go? I don't want to. I don't want your kind of partner. I don't want this type of your friendship. Brethren, a sudden mighty move of God could cause people, some people who had been standing, to be blown away from God. At once, if the move of God can't happen, it will cause some people when they say they stand, that breeze will feel can't carry them come up from God. As new people are coming in, old people might be pushed out. As this revival, they bring new people, they come, some old people when they say not they ready, they go push them out. Well, this could be for several reasons. This one could be for some reasons. Some of the people who are already feeling secure that, I mean, it is here they meet us. Some people don't say, well, no shaking. Not be here they meet us. We've been here for years. We don't be Christian for many years. We know what to do. We know what prayers to say. We know. We know what you will go do. We know the type of prayer we will go pray. We know what you will go talk. I mean, I am the Sunday school superintendent. Who is that young fellow just coming? Don't forget, sin. I may be the old girl of Sunday school. I will be that young person when just they come. The fellow may come in with the power of the Holy Spirit and just blow away the Sunday school superintendent. The person who come with Holy Spirit when fully body and as he come, we all push the ogre of Sunday school go one corner. I remember years ago, just about three years ago now. I remember about three years ago. We were having a program in Abuja. With the whole one program for Abuja. Festival of Love or something. Now Festival of Love or something like they call them. And uh, I've been praying, Lord, perform miracles, let there be signs, let there be wonders. I know they pray, say, God, I may perform miracles, make there be signs, make wonders happen. When the Lord stopped me, I said, son, why are you asking for miracles and signs and wonders? For, for your people, oh Lord, that's why they are coming, etc. He said, have you thanked me enough for all that I've done? God can ask me, say, my picky, why you they ask for miracles, signs and wonders? I said, now for your people, oh God, as they come, God can say, you don't thank me for everything I don't do for you. Oh, sorry, Lord. And then I began to thank him for three days. I refused to ask for anything. I just kept on thanking him. I can't say, God, I beg, sorry. I can't thank God for three days. I not ask for anything. I just thank I just thank God. On the third day, he spoke to me and said, Son, all you have seen thus far is expansion. The third day, night, God can't say, All the one you they see, a small one you they see. An explosion is coming. He say one great one, they come now. He said, But go home. And strengthen the foundations. So may you go out, so may you go prepare yourself for the great thing when they come. So that when the explosion comes, it will not blow off the foundation. So that when these plenty harvests come, the foundation will not go blow and come out. I'm sure somebody is hearing. I believe say some person they hear this one when they talk. Is anybody hearing at all? Anybody there when they hear what they talk? Sorry, I told you that you might not be able to laugh on this. Don't tell you that soon. I know you feel love because of this one. And you see, when revival and is coming, you can't stop it. When I know say revival they come, oh, when I know go feel stop them. It's too late now. In the other day, too late to stop. To come stop this revival. The devil knows it. The devil also know this one, oh. And you are knowing it now. And you yourself, you didn't know him now. A revival is beginning in Europe from this month. Revival they begin for Europe for this month too. When it comes, 
will you say to the Lord, depart from me? When he comes, he will come tell Jesus, I bet I can't leave me. In Acts chapter 10, verse 9 to 18. For Acts chapter 10, verse 9, go reach 18. Acts chapter 10, verse 9 to 18. Acts chapter 10, verse 9, go reach 18. We hear again the story of Peter. The same Peter. We go hear the story of Peter. This same Peter when they talk. And the Lord was about to launch him out into the real death of his life. God do arrange him, won't put him for the main business where he don't create him. And to prepare him, as he was about to send him to the Gentiles, he gave him a vision. To prepare this Peter, as he won't send him, go give those who won't be Gentiles. Peter can't see vision. And Lord, a container from heaven, containing all kinds of creeping animals and all kinds of unclean beasts. One container can come from heaven, and this container contain all animal when we say people of Israel is not they eat. And said to Peter, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And he can hear one voice say, Peter, get up, may you catch any of this animal, may you kill and eat. Peter said, No, Lord. No, Lord. Peter said, No, God. No, God. And nobody says no to the Lord. Nobody they say no to God. Though. If it's your Lord, the answer should be yes. If not your Lord, your answer is supposed to be yes. Man, you know, he was more scriptural than the one who is the Word himself. Peter, for this place, so he like say he can't know the Bible past the person when he say the Bible himself. He was trying to tell the Almighty God the way God should do his thing. They tried to tell God the way God was supposed to do his thing. So I've never, anything unclear has never touched my lips. No, Lord. I mean, no. He said, anything when we say, no, clean, no. I know I eat at once. You know I touch my lips. No, God. The Lord said, Peter, what I call clean, call thou not unclean. God can say, what you are not call clean? Are you the call unclean? He said, no, Lord. He said, no, God. If you don't do it my way, then it's not going to be done. He said, if you not do it the way I want, it <laughs> means say, the thing that was supposed to happen. And Peter lost his ministry. Because of that, what is Peter supposed to do for God, you know, if he can't do it? See, Peter was to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Now, Peter is supposed to go preach to the Gentiles. But because he said, no, Lord, God transferred the ministry to Saul of Tarsus. Because he can't say, no, God. This thing when he's supposed to do, now solve status like on the one. I pray God will not replace you. I pray say God not go replace you. Yeah. I didn't hear your amen. I know hear your amen, no. Yeah. Because in the revival that is coming, <laughs> all kinds of people will come to the church. Because of this revival when they come, every kind of person that will come to the church. And some of you will turn up your nose against them. Some of them now, now they carry on our nose when I see them. You can't come to our church. We don't dress like this. You know, if you come to our church, we don't dress like this. So. Look at the way you cut your hair. This part, this part is painted white. That one is painted green. The center is completely removed. See the way you come cut your hair. One part you paint and white, the other place you paint and green. The center of your hair, you don't bab and come out. Can you come to our church and God will say, I die for them too. And you can't come to our church and you can't hear God say, I also die for these people too. And some pastors will turn them out. Some pastors will drive here, come out for church. And because God must bring these people in, he will have to turn out the pastor. Because God needs to bring these people coming inside, he will push the pastor to come out. So that the congregation can come in. So that all these people will feel come inside. Are you hearing me? Now they hear me. I mean, I remember very well when we started the Papa Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God that finally gave birth to Jesus' house here. I remember when we started the Papa Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We come give birth to Jesus' house for this place. We started in a cinema house. Now ask when they watch film that we start from. I can remember very well what I went through. I know it here I suffered that time. In the hands of my elders. Those people won't be my elders. 
They thought I had backslidden. The TCA had all come up from Jesus Christ. A church in a cinema house. Church for inside where they wash him. And not just a church, the redeemed Christian church of God. Not just any other church, but the redeemed Christian church of God. I mean, if, if it were a Deboye evangelistic outreach. Well, if not a Deboye evangelistic outreach. <laughs> we will understand. We will understand that one. But the redeemed Christian church of God. But the redeemed Christian church of God. And just as they were getting used to that, we began to have churches in hotels. As they come, they try to manage this one before they know we come, they get church for inside hotel. That one, they didn't even know what to say. By that time, oh, they don't know what they won't talk again. But while they were just thinking, what's going on? We started having churches in nightclubs. Before they start to say, what did they happen? Before they know, we don't get church for inside nightclubs. At that time, they thought I had definitely gone crazy. By this time, when they say, yeah, this guy, you don't finish. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I had to call a meeting and say, brethren, very soon we'll be having churches in mosques. I can't tell them, say, my brother and my sister, you know, go to two with the whole church inside mosques. Because those buildings are built for my father. Because those buildings, you know, they are built them for my papa. Yeah. We're going to use them. We're going to use them. That's the one who asked me to talk on preparing for our vessel. No, no, I think I talk on preparing for our vessel. <laughs> because we better prepare. We better prepare ourselves. Oh. Better prepare. Prepare yourself. Oh. Because they are coming. Because they come. Because all these people that you see in the streets, and you would not even want to sit with them. You're going to take Holy Communion with them. All these people, when you they see for streets, when you don't feel it, sit down with them, you know, to, to, you go to follow them, they take Holy Communion. Because they're going to come in because the Lord will bring them. They go come inside oh, because God will bring them come. And when the Lord brings them, you cannot send them out. And when God brings them come, you not get the way you go do if you send them come out. If you will not receive them, they will throw you out anyway. If you don't accept them, and then go to even carry you through and go outside. Amen. Amen. If you want to find out whether it is true or not, why don't you ask why many, many churches, many, many beautiful cathedrals are empty? If you want to know whether it's not true or not, we're going to try to go ask why we say many, many big churches that they are empty. In Europe. For inside Europe. Because what God wants to do, the big men will not allow him. Because what he God want to do, those people when they are big for inside the church, they not go allow them. So he said, well, if you won't allow, then I will do it my own way. He say, okay, if you don't allow me, I will do it my own way. It's about to do something. God won't do something, no. And I know I'm going to be right in the center of it. And you say, I go there inside the center of that thing. And that's why I'm telling you now to get ready. Let me carry tell you that now I'm ready on myself. Will you be there too with me? When I go there with me, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Make a hear on a shout hallelujah. And then if you read Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 16. If you can read Acts chapter 5, verse 12, go read 16. Acts 5, verse 12 to 16. Acts chapter 5, verse 12, go read 16. The Bible tells us that the disciples were having a fantastic revival in Jerusalem. The Bible goes tell you, say the disciples they enjoyed their revival for Jerusalem. I mean, multitudes were being added to the church. Plenty of people now they can join the church. And I'm sure Peter was saying, "This is it." I believe say Peter he say, "Ah, we don't arrive." And James said, yes, brother. And James is in our soul, my brother. And they sat down. I mean, the shadow of Peter was healing. The shadow of Peter, now they eat people in the sick hole. And I, I want to appeal to all of you. I don't want to tell you in advance what God will do next Friday. I want to beg all of you now. No need to tell you now what God will do next Friday. But whatever will stop you from coming, 
rebuke it in Jesus. Anything will stop you, make you not come. I beg, may you pull and come off from your heart in Jesus' name. Because Daddy just whispered to me a couple of days ago that the Holy Ghost service in London is going to be far, far different from that of Nigeria. Because God just sent me from my ear and now say the Holy Ghost service when they were for London, but they far different from the one that they were for Nigeria. <laughs> and that is saying a lot. That will mean many things so. Because what God is doing in Nigeria is frightening. Because what God they do for Nigeria, they make person they fear. To put it mildly. To put them for a small way. Frightening. They make person they fear. So to say that something is going to happen that will be higher than that. What? To come say something for come happen for this Europe when we say go come big past that one. Now wow. Those who know me know what that one means. We shall see what we shall see. People who know me know what this one means. Say so we go see what we go see. Hmm. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it will not be long before some of you here, <laughs> market women, students. You know, go to two when some of them want to be market women, students. Handsome men and beautiful women to borrow from the choir master's uh, language. Man went fine, woman went fine. For what did you require master the talk? It's not going to be long before you begin to raise the dead. You know, to tell before now, can they break people when they already die? And then the whole of Britain will begin to shout, Jesus is Lord. You know, to tell everybody for this or you both place or come they shout, say, Jesus Christ, not be Lord. And then that will be where the danger will lie. And that will come bring the Wahala. The children, the disciples were having a fantastic time in Jerusalem. The disciples that they enjoyed their self for Jerusalem. Ah, this is it. We've got the revival. Hallelujah. And this time the revival would all get a ah, thank God. Oh. And they forgot their world vision. And they don't forget, say God ought to start the whole world. They go. Because what the Lord told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Because what did God tell them for Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8 is that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me first in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He say you will come get power after the Holy Ghost will enter you. The first thing you will do now to preach about me for Jerusalem. Then in Judea, then in Samaria, and then to the uttermost part of the world. Then you can't go Judea, you can't go Samaria. Later you can't go every part of the world. If you are not prepared, when the revival comes, you will want to hide it. If you know how to prepare when the revival comes, or you go want to hide this one. Keep it to yourself. Say, hey, we've got it. And we're going to keep it. Say, ah, we don't get this one. We'll keep them. And you do that, persecution will come. If you can't do this one, people when be say, oh, come, they suffer, you will come, come. That the Almighty God Himself will raise up, not the devil. God Almighty, now go bring this one, not be the devil. You know, many a times God is walking and you say, it's the devil. Sometimes, so now God they walk, oh, and many times you are sitting at the devil. When persecution arose, as we found in Acts chapter 8, verse 3 to 4, when they suffer, when they suffer you as Christian, come, come, as you can find out for Acts chapter 8, verse 3 to 4, the church became scattered. Everybody for the church can scatter. And the Bible said those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. People went scattered, go different parts of the world because of this so far, that they preach the word of God there. The God said, you are not going to sit down here. This thing is to go around the whole world. God said, not be here and go sit down. You are enjoying yourself. This one I get when I'm supposed to go around the world. Since you are not willing to go voluntarily, I send you by force. As soon as no one go by on herself, I go by force, send you now go. Prepare for the harvest. prepare on ourselves for the harvest when they come home. Because it's already here. Because the harvest is already rich here. And after that one, Philip went to Samaria, Acts chapter 8, verse 5 to 8 there. After this one, Philip can't go to Samaria for Acts chapter 8, from verse 5, go rich 8. And a mighty revival broke through. Broke out through somebody that they call a deacon. One big revival could happen for there, and uh, through one deacon, and this thing happened. And who's a deacon? A deacon is somebody who serves bread to widows. Who be deacon? Deacon are person they give people when they get husband bread. 
you know, it's not even for you to be in the choir. That person not get the which he take to come into a choir. But because the power of God is no respecter of persons. Because the power of God not they look person face to. <laughs> Philip took over a whole city. The Bible said there was great joy in that city. Philip can win the whole city for Jesus Christ. And the Bible can't tell us the people for that city can they happy. Thank God for the persecution that drove him away from Jerusalem. We thank God say that the driver come up from Jerusalem. Some of my boys here will agree with me that for a long time I was saying, ah, thank God. The church is growing. Glory be to God. But that's not the end of the story. Spread out. Some of my boys when they go agree with me, say, many years went up, I say, thank God, the church they grow. Not be where the story ends, though, but we still continue to increase. Take a couple of people, send them to another part of London and ask them to start something. Make you take some people, may you send them to a different part of London and tell them, when I go start church there. Okay, Daddy, we will do so, sir. We will do so, sir. And they did nothing. They say, okay, oh, that, uh, Papa, we will go do so. We will go do so. And they not do anything, no. I mean, nothing. And they tell you now, nah, they not do anything. Then when, one day when they found that my voice, which is normally quiet, began to rise a little bit, they say, uh, trouble seemed to be coming. At once, they can't see my voice when we say they look, they increase, oh. they can't say, they all are they come. <laughs> we better do a little bit. More this small, oh. And people that were supposed to be nothing other than maybe drivers, suddenly became pastors. Some people when we say, now na, na ordinary driver they be, oh. at once, now pastor they come be for church. And what do you discover at the church? They were pastors, they started growing. As we now can see, oh, the church when we say they can't be pastor, or can they start to be plenty. The people you think that God can never use, God will use them. People want to to say God not go feel use, God go if he use them. Is anybody here that believes God can use him or her? Anybody when they when believe say God go feel use them? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Make a hear on a shout hallelujah. But. When Philip got to Samaria, and when Philip got to Samaria, he had already learned his lesson. He don't learn from his mistake. That no matter how great the revival may be where you are, that is not an end in itself. You know me say when the revival come up or be for where you did, that will not miss in that place you will remain. So when the Almighty God now spoke to him and said, "Thank you, sir, Mr. City Evangelist." But we need you in the desert. When God can say, Thank you, my Peking, Mr. City Evangelist. But now we are what I know they now want send you go now. He said, Yes, Lord. Now, yes, Lord, now I talk. You can read the story. Now, if you read the story. In the same Acts chapter 8, from verse 26 to 40. For the same Acts chapter 8, verse 26, go reach 40. There was a man who was having a fantastic success in the whole city. And God said, now it's time for you to go into the desert and speak to one man. This is not person when we say they are happy because of what God don't use them for one big city. Now God can tell and say, time don't reach when we say you go where what I not do and only one person you go preach to. And he said, yes, Lord. And he can't tell say, yes, Lord. But that one man was not an ordinary one man. The man came from Ethiopia. This man not be ordinary one man, no. A place where they call Ethiopia and I come from. And through that one man, the gospel came to Africa. And uh, through that one man, now we for Africa come here by Jesus Christ. Brethren, there are some of you that God will use mightily in Britain. My brother and sister, some of now they when we say God will come use now for London here. Yeah. I mean mightily. Go use now where we. And just when you are beginning to say, now I think it is time to build a monument. I've arrived. When you go and to say, ah, time don't reach when we say, I can't relax. I don't reach where they go. Glory be to God. Now, in my church on Sunday, we have 10 services. When you can say, ah, for my church, now 10 services, now what they get. And everywhere is packed. And everywhere, people full them. And now we have to beg people, those of you who come this Sunday, please don't come next Sunday. I will call the beg people when come this Sunday. Say, I beg more than not come next Sunday. So that we can have accommodation for those who could not come in today. So that we will get where we will put people when we say not come today. 
At that time, when you are about to settle down and build yourself a monument, God will send you to Libya. When you don't settle down, say, yeah, I don't, I don't reach where they go. You all relax. Now, there God will come send you go to Libya. And you better say, yes, Lord. I beg, make you talk, say, yes, Lord. <sighs> Hallelujah. And then there is one crucial point, and that is that there is a limit to the time for the harvest. One very important thing, though, this one be say the time for the harvest is this small. I mean, like any farmer knows, when your harvest is right, if you don't harvest it within that period of time, that little time given for harvesting. The harvest will be gone forever. Every farmer knows, say, when your harvest is all ripe, and you not going to harvest it for the right time, you know, say, everything when we say already ripe, they go spread through way. And if you read Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, Jeremiah 8, verse 20. If you read Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, Jeremiah 8, verse 20. It's a cry of some people. Then a cry of some people. He says the harvest is past. He said the harvest don't pass so. The summer is ended. So when the shine does stop. And we are not saved. And we know what they save. The great revival coming. The spirit of the Lord will move mightily. The revival they come and the spirit of God come move well well. Within a short period of time. A small time like that thing will happen. If we don't prepare we will discover that after the whole period is gone. If we not prepare ourselves, we will come see after everything do happen. Oh, we will have churches overflowing, but then we see meet some people on the way and said, "How come I am not saved?" We they see church when we say people don't plenty food, they come outside. We will come see people for street as they walk out. And they will come say, ah, it can't happen. Say, I know can you give my life to Jesus Christ. Because it is the joy of the Father to save everyone. Now, happiness for God to come save everybody. I mean, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Not just a little bit. Because the Bible says, God, he loved the world. Well, well, not be small. Oh. So the Almighty God is telling you and I, the time is now. The Almighty God, they tell me, and you say that time now. now. I've just returned from a tour of our churches in East and Central Africa. I don't want to go see our church when they East and Central Africa. I don't want to begin to tell you what happened in Kenya, what happened in Zambia, what happened in Malawi and Tanzania, and so on. I don't want to start to tell you now what happened for Kenya, what you going happen for Zambia, what you going happen for Malawi, Tanzania, and every other one. So. But I just want to tell you a little bit about what happened in Ethiopia. I want to tell you now, smart what happened for Ethiopia. You know, Ethiopia had been under communist rule for several years. You know, say Ethiopia now under communist news, not a day for, for many years when they pass. And they had tried completely to wipe out anything called God. And then they tried to come clean everything when they call God. But by the grace of God, the people are coming up again. But by God's grace, so, these people they all started to accept Jesus Christ again. And they arranged a meeting for me there to go and preach. They can arrange one meeting so that I can come there and come preach to them. There was a hall, and there's a hall there that's supposed to take 600 people. One hall, oh, they were missing, only 600 people supposed to enter. And the pastor doing the arrangement says, sir, the meeting is to begin by 6, but uh, let's leave home by 6.30. The pastor say, the meeting go start for 6, so... But I won't more leave home for 6.30. I said, why? I can't ask and say, why? He said, so that we can get at least some people in before you arrive. He said, so that some people will not reach church before you can't reach there now. But I said, well, I am not one to teach people to be late. I can't tell and say, I don't want to teach people me they're late too. If you told the people 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock we shall be there. If you tell the people 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock we will not reach there. If they come, fine. If they don't come, at least it will not be said that I... Was late. If they come, the better. If they not come, well, nobody will fit us. Say me, I go late. We got there by six o'clock to find one thousand people already there. We can't go reach that place. Oh, by six o'clock, surprise now one thousand people are already there. For the first time in a long while, 
I preached and I wept. Ah, for the first time, after many, many years, when I passed, so I preached, I couldn't start to cry. Why? What would be the reason? Because I was just telling them little, little testimonies. Because I tell them small, small testimonies. I mean, the kind of testimony that if you tell it in Nigeria, they will say, Daddy, tell us something big. This kind of testimony, when you come to come for Nigeria, people will say, I beg, Daddy, I beg, tell, me, tell us until when, when big pass this one. And the gospel exerted, the congregation started weeping. This is the country, they are belly at once, so everybody comes out to the cry. And after some time, the interpreter started weeping. You know, to tell the person when they interpret for me, comes out to the cry also. So I was the only one left. I only because I remember when they cry. So I joined. So I can't join the cry. After all, the Bible says, weep with those that weep. Well, you know, so the Bible does say, but you cry with those people when they cry. And at the end of one of the meetings, one of the pastors who have been there, an American who has been there for years, came to me and said, Sir, are you open to criticism? After the meeting all finished, one pastor went come from America, went there, there for many years, come meet me, come to see our guy. He said, I feel judge you. I said, of course. I said, you fit now. I was trained as a mathematician. They trained me to make a beam, that's when they solve mass. He said, how can you come to a whole country and spend two days? Because how you will feel come this whole country and only two days you won't stay. I said, I'm sorry. See, there's a lot of work back home in Nigeria. I continue and say, I beg no vessel. I get plenty, plenty work to do for Nigeria. He said, you Nigerians are selfish. You say you people went in Nigeria, and only on ourselves when I like. How can they have somebody like you and keep you to themselves all these years? You see, how they will come get person like you and they will come keep on to themselves all these many years. And here we are, thirsty. Die. For this place we do, they look for a person like you. I will not see and will they die. This time now I want to really cry. This time I better cry, I won't cry. Not because the people are crying, but because I really wanted to cry. Not me because the people they cry now, because I really won't cry this time. <laughs> they are waiting for you there, brethren. They, they wait for you, my brother and sister. Because the Almighty God is going to send his power on you. Because Almighty God will put his power inside you. And you're going to take that power to them. And you can't take this power, go meet them. To set the captives free. To set those people when we say they don't put them for bondage free. I mean, while I was preaching, without praying for anyone, there was an 80-year-old woman whose entire body had been racked with pain, and God just touched her. When I they preach, we just not pray for any person, one 80 years old woman. When we say the woman they feel pain for every part of her body and God can't heal her. For second Kings chapter four verse eight go reach thirteen. Second Kings chapter four verse eight go reach thirteen. It's about a wealthy woman who had been taking good care of a man of God called Elisha. You see one woman when we say get money when they take care of the man of God, what do they call Elisha? Gave him food, built him a house. He can't give her food, good ask for her. And one day, as Elisha was lying down in the house built for him by this woman, as Elisha came to this house, when we say this big woman built for him, the Holy Spirit spoke to Elisha and said, "For this woman, harvest time has come." At once, the Holy Spirit comes to talk to Elisha. Come to say, "Time when this woman will come harvest the rich." So Elisha said, "Well, I don't know if she needed anything." Elisha can say, "I don't know whether this woman need anything, no." Call the woman. Woman, you have been taking care of me all these years. What can I do for you in return? The woman said, I need nothing. She can't call the woman and say, Woman, you don't take care of me all this year. What I go feed do for you to come pay you back? Oh. The woman tell her and say, I don't need anything. Brethren, whether you say you need the harvest or you don't, the harvest will come. My brother and sister, whether you talk say you need this harvest or you don't need that more, the harvest will still come. You can't dodge it. You no go fear it from Amu. It is absolutely impossible. It you know get as it be go happen. The law of harvest is very, very rigid. This law of harvest as you say it will come, it will come. Well, finally the man of God said, Lord, you hear? The woman says she needs nothing. Last night the man of God can say, God, oh you hear? This woman says she don't want anything. No. The Lord said that doesn't stop the law of harvest from working. Find out. She needs something. God going to say, that will not be stop. This law of harvest may not come work. Find out. This woman wants something. And if you read from verse 14 to 17, they then discover that the woman was barren. If you can read 
from verse 14 to 17, you come find and say, This woman, no, I born. And she was advanced in age. If I had the husband, the Bible said the husband was old. This woman, no, old, and the husband, no, old. But when the man of God heard that the woman was barren, he was happy. When the man of God came here, he said, This woman, no, I born, picking the man of God, come happy. This woman was going to get a harvest that money cannot buy. This woman will get harvest when we say money no go feed buy. You know, many times when we give to God, and we give nine pounds and pens and so on and so forth, the only harvest we are looking forward to is also pounds and pens. Sometimes when we give to God and we can't give him pounds and pens, what would they expect in return as a harvest and see pounds and pens? At times the Almighty God will look at you and say, let me give you something. That no money can buy. Sometimes God will come look at you. Say, "Man, I give you waiting money, no go feed buy." That's what He gave to this woman. And what did He give this woman? When the man of God told her, "Woman, you are going to have a son," she said, "I don't believe you." When He come tell the woman, say, "Madam, no, you come born boy picking." The woman say, "I bet I not believe you, bo." Don't lie to me. I bet me you not like give me. Brethren, whether you believe it or not, harvest will come. My brother and sister, whether you like him or not, harvest will come. It will come. It will come. Oh. And if you, you know the story of Cornelius. Now I know the story of Cornelius now. Acts chapter 10, from verse 1 to 6. For Acts chapter 10, verse 1, go read 6. Cornelius was a very generous man too. He was always giving and giving. And one day the Almighty God said, time for harvest. This man they call Cornelius. Now man will be saying, what to give people, how to support people. They give help to people here and there. One day God called us a time for harvest or come. And what he gave him in return for all that he's been doing was the salvation of himself and his entire household. What he God can't give him because of all these things when they all do now for him to come give a life to Christ. And everybody when they is asked can still give their life to Christ. Something again that money cannot buy. This is not something again when we say money no go feed bad. But I'm also sure that you know the story of Gehazi. I believe so. And I still know the story of Gehazi. Gehazi, you can read about him in 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 20 to 27. If you read about the story of Gehazi, 2 Kings chapter 5, for 20, go reach 27. 2 Kings 5, 20 to 27. 2 Kings 5, 20, go reach 27. Gehazi is the servant of Elisha. Gehazi is the servant of Elisha. Gehazi is a man who had the potential of becoming the greatest prophet the world had ever known. Gehazi is supposed to be one big prophet when we see nobody don't hear about him before. Because if you know Elijah, Elijah had so much power that all he had to say is let fire come down from heaven and fire will fall. Because if you know Elijah, Elijah get power so say when he talks, say may fire come from heaven, fire really come from heaven. Elisha was then his servant. Elisha, I can be his servant. When Elijah was about to leave, Elisha said, I want double your power. And he got it. When Elijah won't leave, Elisha had come to Elijah say, I want two times your power. And he can't get him. And if I can give you just a little insight, that's the kind of power coming for you in Britain. If I feel quite explain this thing where we're to now, now that kind of power they come for now for this Britain. And here was Gehazi being the servant of Elisha. Gehazi, now he be the servant of Elisha. If he had done what God expected of him. If he do what God wants him to do. When it was time for Elisha to leave. When he don't reach when Elisha won't go. He too could have said, I want double your power. If he can't tell and say, I, I need two times your power. He would have obtained four times. The power of Elijah. Now four times of Elisha power now if I can't get. But no, 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 that was not what he was interested in. But that not be what he wants to. Anytime they went somewhere, anytime Elisha went somewhere, Gehazi will follow. Anytime Elisha go anywhere, Gehazi will follow him. And as soon as he arrived in the house, he began to collect information. As he reached any place, so the next thing he go do, he go to ask question, he get information. Who is the rich man in this church? Now who get money pass with this church? Who is the wealthy man here? Now who be the big man for this place? How much can I make out of this thing? How much have we get for this place when are they? Oh, I know many of you have been put off Christianity because you have seen people making merchandise of it. Many of you are all carrying Christian go through away for one place because you find and say, some people, they use this Christianity, they tell you make money. 
Why don't we just wait? The harvest will come. Why don't I know your sweets? Because the harvest will soon come. Oh, it will. I tell you, it will come. As the Lord lives. As God will live. So one day, the harvest came for Gehazi. One day, this, the harvest of Gehazi can come. Naaman had been healed of leprosy. You know the story. Naaman, oh, he thought they heal of leprosy. I believe so, and I know the story. And he brought a lot of money to Elisha. He can't carry many money, he can't give Elisha. And Elisha said, ah, I don't need your money. Elisha can't say, ah, ah, I don't want your money now. The power God gave me to heal, he gave me free. The power when God don't give me, I tell the people now, free, give me now. And the Bible says, freely you are given, freely. The Bible doctor say, as you get her free, oh, may you give her free. So, no problem, go. He say, well, no problem, go with your money. As soon as Elisha said that one, he went inside. The answer is, bye, oh my. As Elisha told this one, he went inside his house. The answer could say, wow. This organ does not want to prosper. This organ don't want rich you. Well, I want to prosper. Me, I won't get rich you. I am going to get his money. I will follow after Naaman and I'll get something from him. I go follow this man because I need to collect this money. And he got something. And he can't get something. You know what he got? You know what he gets? He got leprosy. He gets leprosy. Because his day of harvest came. Because the day of his harvest can come. You know the story of Judas is carried very well. When I know the story of Judas is carried very well. I mean everybody knows that one. I believe everybody knows this one. Even those who are not Christian, they, they never name their children Judas is carried. Even people will not be Christian and they know they name their picking Judas is carried. <laughs> you wonder why. Now they wonder why. Because they didn't want their children to end up the way that man ended up. Because they don't want me their picking can end the way that man can end. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the Almighty God. Judas Iscariot had the best when they keep the money of Jesus Christ. But he was regularly stealing from the pocket. But every now and then they steal from the purse. And you know Jesus knew, but he didn't do anything about it. When I know say Jesus Christ know this one, he did not do anything to consign them. Waiting for the day of harvest. And they wait for the day of harvest. When the day of harvest came, he got plenty of money. When the day of harvest came, reach you, Judas is carry get plenty of money and use it to buy a piece of land where he was to be buried. He can't use this money to buy one big piece of the land, and that piece of land that they bury and put. Many of us, because we are constantly committing sin. Many of us, because we they commit sin every now and then. And the Almighty God does not seem to be doing anything about it. And the Almighty God, like saying, "No, they see us." We think He doesn't know. You ought to say, "No, no." As the Bible says, "The one who made eyes, will he not see?" As the Bible they talk, say, "Person who make eyes, he not go see." The one who made ears, will he not hear? The person who make ears, he, he not go feel hear. The word of God says with him there is absolutely no darkness. The word of God does say inside God though, no darkness there at all. And science has been able to prove to us that <laughs> with one or two equipments, even when it is midnight, everything can still be like noonday. Science does tell us so with one or two equipment, even though deep within inside midnight, everywhere feel bright like seeing the afternoon within. We are dealing with a God that you cannot even shut out with dogs. Would they deal with God when we say, you know, go we'll feel used dogs, they lock them outside. Because when he wants to come in, he doesn't need dogs. Because when he won't come inside, you don't even need to pass through your door. Anywhere where there is air to breathe, God is there. Anywhere when we say you air, there when we say you feel breathe, God is there. And so many of us have been living in sin. Doing all kinds of things, cheating on the council, cheating on this. Many of us, we see the inside scene. We they do some yet, we they cheat the council. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. That may that may include several people. Sorry, I'm not supposed to talk that one. No, that one will concern many people. And because nobody seems to know, we think God doesn't know. And because nobody know about him, we think say God does still know about him. He does. God know. And everything is being recorded. And everything when you they do, you they record and done. Waiting for the day of harvest. And you wait for that day of your harvest. Meaning what? What did this one come mean? 
that you should prepare for the day of harvest. Say make you prepare for that day of harvest. Because it's going to come. Because it will surely come. If you have been doing fine, the child of God, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, living holy. If they do well and you be child of God, you they born again. The blood of Jesus Christ all wash you and you they live holy life. Doing the work of God to the best of your abilities. Congratulations, because your day of harvest is around the corner. They do God work the way God expects you to do and with all your power. Congratulations on the day of your harvest. It will soon come. But if you are believing in sin, disobeying God, but if you live in sin and you don't know disobey God, as if God doesn't even know, as if He doesn't care, as if God not even know, as if God not care, prepare. I have an advice for you. There are two ways you could prepare. Prepare yourself. I get advice for you. There are two ways you feel prepare. One is to tell God and say, well, if you are truly up there, do whatever you want to do. Let's say to the matter once and for all. One has to tell God, say, if you really they up there, do anything you like to do. But you say to this thing once and for all. That's what Eli said. And I want Eli to talk now. When God warned him, Eli, I'm about to fight you. He said, it's God. Let him do what he wants to do. When he said, Eli, I won't fight you. Eli said, hey, you be God. Now do anything you like to do. And God did. And God can't do him. Wiped out his entire family in one day. Everybody went there inside that Eli family. And I got key for one day. But there's one beautiful aspect of the gospel. The one better place of the gospel. The Lord says in his word. God can talk for a word. If you make a tree good, his fruit will become good. He says if you make one tree good, the fruit when it will be a good day good. That's in Matthew chapter 12 verse 20, 33. Matthew 12 33. For Matthew chapter 12 verse 33. You will see that for Matthew chapter 12 verse 33. In other words, if I run to the almighty God and I say, <laughs> If harvest comes today, I am done for. If you come wrong, go meet Jesus Christ. You can say, in case harvest comes today, ah, my own don't finish. Can't you help me? You know, if you help me, can't you give me an opportunity to start all over again? You know, if you give me that opportunity, man, I can't restart again. He will say, you are welcome. He will tell you, say, you are welcome. You run to him and say, if I am to begin to harvest now, there's no need deceiving myself. I am in trouble. If you run to right, you can't say, if I can't start with the averse now, no need for me to come deceive myself. I'm a big wall a day. Can you help me? You will say, sure, come. You feel help me. You will say, yes, now, come now. According to First John chapter 1, verse 7. For First John chapter 1, verse 7. First John 1, verse 7, the Bible says, First John chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible does say, The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from how many sins? The Bible does say, the blood of Jesus Christ, they cleanse us from how many sins? All sins. He will say, come, come and wash in my blood. You say, come, you come wash inside my blood. Let's wipe out every record that is against you with my blood. We will clean every record when they are against you with my blood. I mean, the Bible says it clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible talking for 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It also, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is what? A new creature. You see, if anybody is inside Jesus Christ, a new person, that person be. He said, all things are passing away, behold. How many things become new? He said, all things don't work out, go. He said, how many things are they new? All oh, things. If you come to him humbly, sincerely, and say, change my history, he will do so. If you come to Jesus Christ, you come humble yourself, and you come with the whole of your heart, and you can tell and say, I bet change my history, you go do that one. Oh, I know him. He will do so. I know him, you go do that one. He will so change you that. The one who used to be you will no longer be there. He go change you so tell the person when be say be you. The person will go be there again. The one who had your history will be dead and forgotten. The one when be say get your history, that person go die. Though he go die, go like that. Otherwise, how can somebody like Paul say I have wronged no man? That might be one of the reasons when be say person like Paul, when they say I not do anybody bad. <laughs> 
the chairman when they were stoning Stephen to death. When be the chairman when we say that they stoned Stephen to death. Said I wronged no man. Why? He can't to say I no do anybody bad. Do. What be that reason? Because one day he surrendered to the Lord on the road to Damascus. Because one day he can't carry life, give Jesus Christ for the roads went to Damascus. And Saul of Tarsus died. And that day, that Saul of Tarsus can die. And Paul of Tarsus arose. And Paul of Tarsus can wake up. I think I was sharing with some of my children yesterday. I believe, sir, they discussed this thing with some of my children yesterday. How was it? I think it was yesterday, yeah? I gave them a little bit of my testimony. Some of you have had the testimony before. But I'm sharing it for for the benefit of those of you who have never had it before. I tell them some of my testimony. I believe some of them have not heard this testimony before. And they share it because of those people when we say no one heard them before. Talking about how God can change everything about your life. Change it so completely that your friends will not even recognize you. How God will feel can change everything concerning your life. He will change it until your friends. They never even know you again. If you will allow him. If you fear allow him. And I told them, I said, before I gave my life to Jesus, I had so many girlfriends, I didn't even know the number. I tell you, I say, before I give my life to Jesus Christ, I get many girlfriends until I don't even know their number. You no, know, today I would think they are 13. Then I would remember, oh, I forget, forgot Jane and, uh, and Mary and this one. Oh, what about that Abby girl and so on. Today I, I would say that they be 13 until I can't remember, say, hey, I forget Jane, I forget Mary, and I forget the other one. What about Abby Abigail? But of all this, there was one that was extra close. But for all this one, though, one day, this one close to me, where we We did everything together. Everything. I wonder they do now. Both of us did one together. Each time I said that, everybody looked up. They want to hear the details. Anytime I talk this way, everybody go look up. They want to hear everything about the story. I refuse to tell you the details. I go refuse to tell you now this the full story. But then we, we became separated. At once, so something can separate us. She went her way, I went my way. She got married, and I got married. She go her way, I go my way. She come marry, I come marry. Years passed. Many years come pass. And I was working at that time at the University of Ilorin when all of a sudden they transferred her husband in his place of work to Ilorin. And they work for the University of Ilori. At once, they come transfer her husband, come to Ilori. And she came with her husband. She came with her husband. And she had a baby that was born lame. She gave Piki when Missy the born and the Piki of Iwaka. So when they arrived in Lauren, somebody told her, Ah, there's a pastor up there. If he prays for this, your son, it will, it will work. And they come in Lauren, one pair of and say, What pastor did that place to? If this pastor pray for this, your Piki, when of Iwaka, at once the Piki will start to the Iwaka. So he brought the child to the mission house where I was staying. He got carried his picking, come the mission as where they stay. And I was in the living room and there were some people at the veranda. And there inside Palo, why some people sit down for, for veranda? So she got to the veranda and said, I want to see the pastor. They said, it's inside. She can't walk out of the veranda. She can't tell the people, say, I want to see the pastor. They say, Pastor, the Palo. So she opened the door. And when we saw, because we were what they used to call old flames. And when she opened the door, she can't see me because they, they call us old firewood. Uh, we greet her like uh, the old flames greet. We greet the way old firewood they greet. Hello, how are you? Where have you been? How has the world been treating you? Et cetera, et cetera. Hello, how are you there? How, where you know this sis? How the world they treat you now? When we finish, she said, I want to see the pastor. When we finish, she can't tell me, say, I want to see the pastor. So I said, yes, can I help you? I can't tell her, I say, yes, I feel help you. He said, I said, I want to see the pastor. She told me, I told say I want to see the pastor. I said, I'm the pastor. She said, you? I tell her, I say, and I may be the pastor now. She called to say, you? You the pastor? I said, yes. You the pastor? I said, yes. He said, you will pray and God will answer? He said, you go pray and God go answer. But you see, she didn't know that if you make a tree good, this fruit can be good. She now knows say if you make a tree good, the fruit go they good. The law of harvest is powerful. This law of harvest is they powerful. But it's not as powerful as God. They not powerful rich God. The Almighty is willing, if you will allow him tonight, 
to cleanse you in his blood. Almighty God wants to, if you agree with him, to come use the blood of Jesus to come to clean you. Transform your life completely. You can't turn your life from where it is may face God's direction. Who knows, by this time next year, you might be a pastor. Who knows whether by this time next year a pastor you can be. And your friends who have been drinking with you, fornicating with you, taking drugs with you, doing all kinds of rubbish with you, will say, you a pastor? And your friends will miss all of them that they drink together and all of them that they misbehave together. One another they take drugs together. When they do all, all those nonsense together, they'll come to say, you be pastor. And you will say, oh sure. You can't tell us, yes now. Nah. After all it is written, therefore if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. You can't tell us, if the Lord writes that for the Bible, say if any man be inside Jesus Christ, now nah, new person will be. All things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. All things don't work out, go as you see them with everything that they knew. Shall bow our heads, please. They could bow our heads. I just want you to meditate for just a minute on what we have heard. I want to know that this thing will be soon at all year. The harvest is coming. Harvest they come, boom. Harvest of soul will come. The harvest of souls will come. Nothing can stop it. You don't get anything when you go stop them. The harvest for all the good things you have done will come. The harvest of all the good things when you don't do will come. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop them. And the harvest for all the evils that you have done are on the way. And the harvest of all the bad, bad things when you don't do, the day rose they come. But the blood of Jesus can do something about that. But the blood of Jesus feed and do that one. So if there's anyone here tonight who will say, I think I want to surrender my life to Jesus. If anybody there here, I want to say, it could maybe say, I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Before I begin to reap all the terrible things I have sown. Before I can start to divest all the bad, bad things when we said, I plant. I want his blood to intervene. I want my blood to help me. Pastor, please pray for me that God will save my soul. Pastor, I beg pray for me so that God will come save my soul. That He will forgive my sins. So you can forgive my sins. That He will change my history. You can't change what He had all be. If there's anyone like that here in this congregation, will you please raise your hand? If anybody there for this place all will day, I won't make that person raise up your hand. Now that all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed. Now when we say everybody don't bow their head, they don't close their eyes. You say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. If you say, Pastor, I beg, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want the Almighty God to forgive me. I want the Almighty God may come forgive me. I want Him. God bless you. Yes. Keep the hand up for just a minute. God bless you. God bless you. I beg, carry your hand for a minute. Too. God bless you. Raise it very high. Thank you. Thank you. I beg, raise and raise make it there high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see a hand up there too at the very back row. If you see hands for that back row. I can see other hands going up to you. Please raise the hand very quickly. I want to pray for you. The choice is yours. And they see other hands when they raise. Mona raise now quick, quick, because I want to pray for now. Now, now, all consign be that too. The choice is yours. Now, your choice be that too. God bless you. Yes, I can see more hands coming up. God bless you. I still see some people when they see they raise their hand. If you want the Almighty God, yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I can see more hands coming up now. God bless you. Any other person who wants to say, yes, Lord? Any person who wants to say, yes, Lord? I think I, I don't want to struggle with you any further. I don't want to drag with you any longer. I want you, Lord, to take over my life now and forgive me all my sins. I want me you come handle my life now. May you forgive me all the sins when I don't commit. Wash me in your blood so that I can become a brand new creature. Wash me with your blood so I can't be a new person. Any other person, very quickly. Any other person there, quick, quick. Oh. Yes, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Very, very quickly now. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Any other person? Any person still there? This is the final call. Now the last call be this one. Remember, yes, God bless you. Thank you very much. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other person? Anybody see the... Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Any other person very quickly now? This, this is a final call. Anybody there again? And the last one be this. The choice is yours. Are your own concern, no? I've just told you the truth as I know it. I'm not telling you the, way, the truth the way I know I'm. 
And the word of God is forever settled. And this word of God is settled forever. And God has given you the opportunity tonight now to say, Yes, Lord, I'm surrendering. God will give you this opportunity so that you can surrender your life to Christ. Yes. God bless you. Yes. Am I seeing another hand here? Okay, yes. Thank you very much. Any other person? The Lord brought you here to hear this message so that you can prepare. God will bring you home here so that you hear this message so that you feel can prepare yourself. And the way you can best prepare is to ask him now to wash you in his blood, save your soul, transform you so that you become a brand new creature. The way when we say you feel prepare yourself and to give your life to Christ, to ask Jesus Christ, may use the blood to wash you, make it transform you. Any other person? Anybody? This is a final, final call. Anyone now, quickly, if you have not raised your hand before, yes, God bless you. This is not the last, last call to anybody. Raise your hand quick, quick. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Any other person? Anybody still there? This is a final call now. And the last one be this. Anyone, yes. Okay, yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You, you are taking a very wonderful decision now. Now, better decision you did take. Have you attended to all these people? When I don't answer all these people. All right. Any other person now? Any other person still there? Glory be to God. Brethren, those of you who have given your life to Jesus, will you please join me in praying for these people who lifted their hands for salvation? Those of you who have not given their life to Jesus, come on and join me in praying for these people. When we say raise their hand, they won't give their life to Christ. That the Almighty God will save their souls. Make you pray. Say, make Almighty God save their souls. That He will wash them in His blood. That May He wash them inside His blood blood they will write their names in the book of life they write their name inside the book of life and if you are still just deciding and you are just about to raise your hand you can still do so very very quickly if you see they make up your mind to raise your hand you feel still do one more do one quick quick you can still do so very quickly you feel do one quick quick any other person now any other person still there let's pray for them brethren and say lord save their souls we'll pray for them my brother and my sister we'll say god i better save their souls oh. have mercy on them i better may you sorry for them wash them in your blood may you wash them inside your blood forgive all their sins transform their lives let them become brand new creatures for you lord may you forgive them all their sins may you come change their life may they come be new person for you lord let them become brand new creature may they be new person for you lord wipe away all their sins and may you clean all their sins let this day be a new beginning for them father a new beginning for them may this day be a new beginning for them Papa, new beginning for them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for them for, for at least one one minute more. I'm going to pray for them for at least one minute too. As the Almighty God to have mercy on them. I'm going to tell God Almighty to make it sorry for them. And those of you who lifted your hands for salvation, talk to the Lord and say, Father, please. Receive me just as I am. Those of now will raise up on I'm going to talk to the Almighty God. I'm going to say, Papa God, I beg you, may you assess me the way I be. And forgive me. Save my soul. Forgive me, you. Save my soul. Cleanse me in your blood. Use the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Take on clean me. And write my name in the book of life. Let this day be a new beginning for me. Write my name inside the book of life. May this day be the day of new beginning for me. Let this day be a new beginning for me. May this day be the day of new beginning for me. Let this day be a new beginning for me. May this day be a day of new beginning for me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. In Jesus' name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, I want to thank you. Eternal Rock of Ages, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your word. The very, very truth. I want to thank you for your word. The truth when we say be the real truth. I thank you because your word says we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. I thank you because your word says we will know the truth and this truth will come set us free. Thank you for telling us the truth today. I thank you because you don't tell us the truth today. And thank you that the truth will make us free. Thank you because this truth will come make us free. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. I may you receive our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you. For the mighty revival about to start, particularly here in Britain. We thank you for this big revival when we can start for Britain. We thank you that we are part of it. Thank you because we'll be part of them. Whether the devil likes it or not, we're already part of it. Whether the devil likes them or not, we'll all be part of them. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Make you accept our thanks in Jesus' name. 
King of glory, we pray. King of glory, we come pray. Particularly for your children who have lifted their hands for salvation today. For those your children who carry their hands for salvation today. Every one of them, Lord, save their souls in Jesus' name. Every one of them make you save their soul in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. I may make you sorry for them. Forgive all their sins. I may make you forgive all their sins. Cleanse them in your blood. I may make you clean them with inside your blood. And write their names in the book of life. And write their name inside the book of life. And Father, I pray that from today onward, they begin to live a brand new life. Papa, I pray for this day onward, the minute I start to live a brand new life. A life of purity, a life of holiness. The life of purity, the life of holiness. So that on the day of judgment, my Father and my God, they will be able to smile. For the day of judgment, so that they will feel smile. Father, let it be so in Jesus' name. Papa, make it be so in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Well, before I take my seat, there is one little thing God will want me to do. Before I go sit down, though, get one small thing when God wants me to do. So there are many of us that would love to serve God, but we have certain things hindering us. Many of us, they when we say we want to serve God, but something they when we say they stop us for, to do that. Some, it is sickness. Some of us, now sickness. Some, it is poverty. Some of us, now because we don't get money. Some, it is one problem or the other that you cannot even share with anyone. Some, now one problem or the other, when we say we don't feel tell anybody. I would love God to settle that one today. I like may God come settle that one today. So that by tomorrow morning you are ready to run for the Lord. So that by tomorrow morning you you go ready to come go out for God. Is that okay by you? That one do okay for you. And now I want you to pray like you have never prayed before. And one more I pray like someone I know I pray before. I want you to pray like somebody who means business. I want you pray like person when we say really want mean business. And your prayer is, Lord, everything in my life that will not allow me to serve you the way I want to. And one more I pray, more I say, God, anything inside my life will make me not serve you the way I'm supposed to serve you. Remove it now. Shall we pray? Come out um, now. May we pray. And I mean pray. I mean so may you pray. Everything in my life. Everything in my life. That will not allow me to serve you the way I want to. You're not going to make me serve you the way I want to serve you. Everything in my life that will not allow me to be a part of your program. Anything in my life will not going to make me be part of your program. Everything that will not allow me to be in the forefront of this revival that is coming. Anything will not go allow me to be for front position for this revival when they come. Remove it tonight, Father. Come out time this night, Papa. Everything, whatever it may be. Everything, anything when it be. Sickness, poverty, barrenness. Whether not sickness, whether not poverty, whether not because I don't get children. Sorrow, demons. Any type of sorrow, whether not demons. Everything in my life. Anything when they inside my life. That will not allow me to serve you. When they will allow me to serve you. The way I ought to. The way I supposed to. Everything in my life that will not enable me to be what you want me to be for you. Anything when they will make me not be that thing what you want me to be. My Father, my God, destroy today. Destroy now. My Father, my God, I beg, destroy them now. Even now as I pray. Even now as I pray. To the glory of your holy name. To the glory of your holy name. Lord, help me. Help me today. Oh God, help me. Help me today. Intervene vigorously in my life. I bet may you enter my, my case. So everything. Everything. Whether it be physical. Whether I think when I feel see. Financial. Whether I buy money. Mental. Whether I think when beside they make me they think. Emotional or spiritual. Whether I emotional trouble. All things when I know they see. That will not allow me to serve you. Will not allow me to serve you. To the best of my ability. The way I'm supposed to serve you. Whatever it is, Father, destroy. Anything when it be, destroy him, destroy him. Destroy. Destroy him, destroy him. Destroy, destroy, destroy. Destroy him, destroy him. Destroy, destroy today. Destroy him today. Now, as I pray. Now, now, as I pray. Everything. Everything. Contrary to your will. Why not dig according to your will? My Lord and my Savior. My Lord and my Savior. Everything that 
hinder me. Everything will go fit stop me. From being the best that you want me to be for you. To be the that person where you want me to be for you. Destroy today, Father. Destroy her today. With your mighty power, destroy even now as I pray. With your big power, destroy her today, even as I pray. To the glory of your holy name. To the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. Glory be to your name. Glory be unto your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. Well, I must obey my father. I must obey my father. He's just told me that you should join hands. Join hands with somebody. He just tell me small, join our hands together. And pray for the fellow you are joining hands with. And say, Father. And you come pray for the person you join hands to. And may you to say, Papa. Let this man, this woman, be a vessel unto honor. Make you to say, let this man or this woman on her own be vessel unto honor. Let's talk to the Almighty God. More we'll talk to the Almighty God. This brother, this sister, let him, let her be a vessel unto honor in your hands from now on. This brother, this sister, make it be vessel unto honor for your hand from this day on. King of glory, one way or the other, this brother, this sister, let him, let her be a vessel unto honor in your hands, O Lord. King of glory, one way or the other, this brother, this sister, let him, let her be vessel of honor for your hand, O Lord. Oh, this is your children, Father. Every one of them, Father. All oh, this is your children, fa- Papa. Every one of them, Papa. Let them become vessels unto honor in your hands. May they be vessel of honor for your hand. Mighty vessels unto honor. Big vessel of honor for your hand. Yes, O Lord. Do it. Yes, O Lord. I bear one. Glorify your name. So that your name will be glorified. Mighty vessels unto honor. May they be big vessel of honor. In your hands, O Lord. For your hand, O God. Mighty vessels unto honor. Big vessel of honor. Every one of them. And then become mighty vessels unto her. Every one of them, may they be big vessel of honor. In your hands, O Lord. For your hand, O Lord. Mighty vessel. Big vessel. That will go forth, Lord God Almighty, and bring mighty, mighty revival. When we we'll go outside, we're going to go bring big, big revival. To the whole wide world. For the whole world. Let it be so, my Father. Make it be like that, Papa. Empower each and every one of them. May you give them the power. Power them, Lord. Give them the power. Make them vessels unto honor. May they be vessel of honor. For the glory of your name. For the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we do pray. Daddy, I I just want to thank you. Papa, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the great love that you have for these your people. I thank you because you love these your people well well. I know that somehow their lives can never be the same again. I'm not saying that now. Their life will be the same again. Because I know there is power in your word. Because I know say power there inside your word. You have spoken to them. You don't talk to them. You have sent your word to them. You don't send your word. Go give them. And I know you have healed them. And I believe say you don't heal them. I know you have delivered them. I know say you don't deliver them. I know you have given them victory. I know say you don't give them victory. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Papa, may you receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every hindrance in their life, Papa, I pray every obstacle for their life, that could prevent them from becoming vessels unto honor, that could stop them, may they not be vessels of honor, every hindrance in their life that could prevent them from being in the forefront of this is your plan for the end time. Every obstacle for their life will go stop them. May they not they front for your plan for this end time. Every hindrance, whether physical, any obstacle, whether not the one that they see, mental, whether not the one where busy person they think about, financial, about money, spiritual, marital. I've been at the one that not they see. I be now the one when they inside marriage or otherwise. Every hindrance, Father. Any obstacle. Destroy today in Jesus' name. Destroy her today in Jesus' name. With your mighty power, my Lord and my God. For your big power, my Lord, my God. Set your people free in Jesus' name. Make you God set your people free in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that even beginning from now, 
This your children will become vessels unto her. I pray for now on no. this your children will be vessel of honor. No. Anyone they touch from today onward, let them receive miracles. Anyone they touch from this time onward though, make you receive miracles. Everywhere they go, let there be a revival. Anywhere when they go, make revival reach there. In all their churches, let there be a revival. For all their churches, you make revival they day. Even in their homes, let there be revival. For their home, make revival they day. In their towns and villages, let there be revival. For their towns and their villages, make revival they. And let your name be glorified. And may your name be glorified. Bless them, O Lord. Papa, I bet bless them. Bless them mightily. May you bless them well, well. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's give the Lord a big hand. Now more clap for God. Though.